everybody. Hey. Yay. Welcome, everybody. Lisa DeBates and I are waiting for you guys. And it's nice to see all of you. Thank you for joining us on our Mondays. This is like a Monday momentum thing. Let's call these uh, Momentum Mondays. Hi there, Marie. It's great to see you. <laughs> you want to see what we're going to do today? Yeah. Well, we're wondering too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, for those of you who are uh, live with us, welcome and please use the chat and, uh, you know, pop in where you're uh, kind of joining us from. Where are you around the world? We love to get the feel for like where you are and, uh, you know, let us know what medium you're, you love to work in. So how about those two things? Uh, where you're located, there's Lisa Arachimi, you are here. Great. <laughs> Arachimi works in many mediums. Um, great to see you, Arachimi. Okay, so we're going to really get started on time, guys, because there's a lot to do. And I'm going to put my gloves on. And Lisa is going to be painting. Lisa, what are you painting in today? Uh, I have a couple of paintings that are, you know, just sparts, messes, and I'm just going to move them forward. All right. Hi, Judith. Great to see you. Always nice to see you. And we have Becky Haran. Wonderful. San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Elaine Florney. Nice. Jeanette from Ontario, Canada. Wonderful. Thank you guys for being here. I know you're all in different time zones too. So I hope this time zone works for you. And, you know, I even had a lady say, wow, that's 4 a.m., but maybe I'll see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're awake, why not? Right? Right. Okay, guys. So here's, as you're coming on board, great. And, uh, you know, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, and thank you, Lisa, for being here with me because it's so, it's not as lonely. <laughs> to yeah. have her. She's so much fun. You guys know her. She's so much fun. She's in all of my uh, groups and uh, she's uh, one of my admin in Art and Success Pro and she's uh, paramount to our, our happiness and joy. <laughs> so uh, guys, I'm going to turn my uh, camera now. So Lisa, if you can feature my uh, my table here, and I'm going to talk about what I'm doing right off the bat okay. here. And, okay, uh, let me scoot it over this way. Okay, so what I've done here, guys, is remember this from last Monday? Maybe you weren't here last Monday, but this was my little demo in Cold Wax and Oil and Automatic Drawing or slash Automatic Painting from uh, kind of the idea being from the Expressive Drawing Book by Stephen Imoni, which is unfortunately out of print, but automatic drawing essentially in a nutshell is to do something without thinking. So uh, that's my forte, I would say. I've made it my forte because I needed to make it my forte. I needed to have a way to uh, begin the painting process without thinking because if I think too much, I shut down. And I wonder if how, how many of you guys are kind of like that. A lot of us are like that. So I'm gonna work into this one today, move it forward. And I'm sure that uh, when you look at something like this, you're like, well, I don't know what the heck, right? What the heck am I going to do with this? Because it's just a lot of everything. And that's very true. Um, and before I do this, I want to show you something real quick. Part of what you can do, and I'm, you know, this is something that we do in my course. I, I teach people about limited palettes and why they're so nice. Because, you know, if, if you... Uh, if you just grab a couple colors and say, okay, these are my colors and I'm gonna throw onto this canvas or panel or whatever it is, you don't really know what you're gonna get. And that's fine if, if, uh, if you, I would say that's fine if you really understand color. If you don't really understand color, it can be a little bit of a disadvantage, okay? So the more experienced you are, the more freedom you have, right? So the more knowledge you have, the more freedom you have. And if you want freedom, then it's really worth it to learn about color and I did, I did, I've put in my 10,000 hours. And so, you know, that's, that's all really great. So now um, I've, what I've done here is these are the colors that I have chosen to work on today. Um, Lisa, can you feature my, okay, thank you. These are the colors that I have on my palette today. I've mixed them one-to-one uh, -one with cold wax medium. So this one is Payne's gray, black, white, cadmium red deep and transparent earth yellow. Let me just grab that tube of paint because it's kind of an unusual one. Um, here it is. And it's made by Gamblin. 
You, and uh, it's transparent. It, not only is it transparent, but the name says it's transparent. So then you really know it's transparent. So typically it's good to have opacity and transparency on your palette. And I've done a swatch of this already um, in the past. Let me show you that. So I'm not just like, you know, I'm familiar with this palette is what I'm saying. And this is the palette I'll show you real quick that I made with that one. This is my color swatch book, but this is the palette that I'm using today. Um, but if I didn't have this, uh, this exercise that I did, then typically what I would do is what's called like this four square, right? So if I'm just, uh, I'm going to get started real quick, just like I did last time, just put down some marks. And really my main reason for doing this part is to get a feel for like, how much am I dealing with? How much space do I have to work with? It's almost like a subliminal thing. Um, so <clears throat> this again is, is just the automatic part. And you'll see that what I do next is also automatic. So to me, uh, pretty much uh, the beginning painting process is very automatic. I'm not really thinking because I don't want to interrupt play. So I'm just putting on a few things here just to get, get things going. It's easier to work into something where there's marks or you know, changes in values from thick to thin and dark to light, you know, that's exciting. So you start to get excited. Then um, let's say that I didn't know what this palette was going to do. Uh, this is a great way to test out colors. So uh, right off the bat, I'm just going to take some of my lovely Payne's Gray. And uh, I know you can't see everything I'm doing, but, you know, don't worry about that. So I'm kind of mixing you're um, working in cold wax and oil, right, Pam? Yes. Oh, yeah. Let me get my little doohickey. Where'd that go? Okay. <laughs> important. So here we go. Can you guys read that? This is... Yes. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> All right. So I've mixed um, with a lovely medium. It looks like a medium steely blue, right? But And the reason it looks that way is because I've added white to Payne's Gray, which you know, Payne's gray and black actually have a lot of color in them. Uh, and so I'm just, I'm showing you how I would kind of like begin to add into this next uh, layer here um, and with the sole purpose of really being right now to explore this color combination, right? I've got three colors, which is a huge amount of color. You, you really never need more than three colors plus black and white. Those of you who are in my Art Success Master's course know that because what happens when you start to add more than three colors plus black and white is you need a palette that's the size of like a building. I mean, it's you just have so many options and you just yeah. don't. Excuse me yeah. a moment. Do you have any kind of a volume control? Is that uh, too loud? Are, well, there are too a couple of people saying that they can't hear you very well and I'm I was looking to see if I could change it, but I don't think I can. Okay, is that better? Is that better? Everybody let us know if you can hear Pam. You talk for a bit, Pam. Okay, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. How's that? Better, Marianne? Can you hear me better? I see Marianne Trotter saying she is still too low. Um, yes. yes, better. A lot of okay, so me speaking here, yeah. so... Um, and other people are saying it's fine. Claudia and Marianne, I, I don't know why you might, uh, if you can you do guys a test. You need to turn your volume up probably because yeah. every, if, if everybody's not having the same problem, guys, it's probably on your end. Right. Okay. All right. So I'm, is that just continue to monitor uh, with you guys, each other, just talk to your, yourselves and, and see if, um, if others are having the same problem as you. Okay. Yes. Okay, because if you're getting some people say it's plenty loud, you guys, that, that's an indication that it's not, not on my end. It's probably on yours. Right. Okay, so the reason that I got, I've put this color down like this is because um, I'm looking at this. See, the, the thing about it is, like, notice I use white tape. This is actually divided into four paintings, and I call this a four square. And this is what we do in my Powerful Design and Personal Color course. It's a way of creating a series um, without feeling like you're creating a series. So you, you kind of treat it as one until you get further down the line. And then it's like, oh, but now we're gonna focus on this painting. And then there's this painting. So I've got white tape down here, dividing this into four quadrants, which you probably can't see the tape very well, but there is tape here. Um, Ooh, kind of, yeah. 
Okay. Now, so I've just tested out that color and I really like it, right? So, and I kind of knew that because I've already done, I've already worked with this palette in the past. Um, but now I'm going to combine a little bit of that lovely Payne's Gray to my Cad Red. Again, just I'm mixing it because I'm trying, like I love, okay, you guys need to know what colors you love, right? Um, and that, that just takes a lot of experience. I didn't just like turn up today and decide that I love this palette. I've done so much, uh, I've done so much, so many swatches and things like that. So now I've just combined some of that gorgeous uh, Cad Red uh, Deep, which does not look like this because it looks like this now because I've just added some paints gray to it, right? So I'm just gonna like move it around. And, and again, I'm trying to figure out if I'm, I'm trying to show you guys what it would be like if I did not know what these colors were going to do. Here's some pure, a little bit more pure of that. They look gorgeous. so wonderful together. Thank you. So now, like, all right, uh, this is also going to be a little bit of a demo on. Whoops. Yeah. Do you yeah. mix the cold wax medium with the oil one to one? I did. Okay. So now guys, I'm gonna like move this paint around. There's more than one way to do it, but this is one way. This is kind of a monoprint way. You just do that and you know what, we can move it over here and you can take that and move it over here. Now, it, tell me tell me if it looks like I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. I will I will take that as a major compliment because <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. Normally on a Monday, like, you know, Mondays would be like my best day of all for not thinking. But in addition to that, this is the way I work. So bravo. And uh, I'm going to take this guy now and just see see what I can get away with. Like, like my play stage is what can I do? What if? What if I do this? I'm not thinking. I'm just doing. All right. So that's that. So now I've got two colors here. Now I've got my transparent earth yellow and uh, this is transparent, right? So I could add a little bit of, if I add white to it or black to it, it's no longer transparent. That's one thing you need to know. If I add cadm cadmium red deep to it, it's no longer transparent. It's, it's still gonna be semi-transparent, but if you add anything to a transparent color that's opaque, it's no longer gonna be as transparent. That's okay. I just wanna like put this down and see what I can get away with, right? Um, now I'll take my brayer and just do this and see, it's going to move that paint around. It's overlapping beautifully, right? And I can put it back on my palette and charge my brayer and just do, you know, this. There's a sense of geometry. Bingo. I just got some geometry and I love Ooh. geometry. And I don't often. Mixture, I'm not, isn't that lovely? I'm not a big brayer person, guys, and the reason is that it's so predictable. And I know a lot of cold wax and oil artists like to use their brayers, but um, I like to do things that are a little bit less uh, predictable. But I'm using it now just to, because this number one is a demo. It'll go faster. I can spread more. Uh, I have more coverage faster. But I'm still trying to avoid that edge, right, of the brayer. Like this is an obvious brayer edge, but this is less obvious. So that that's more my cup of tea is... Um, like technique is important, but you don't want it to look like, oh, she used rare or, oh, she used some bubble wrap or, oh, she used some uh, netting or whatever it might be that, you know, it's like when people can automatically tell what you did is less mysterious. And, you know, mis being mysterious, I think, in your work is really important for uh, that, that sense of awe, like, wow, how did that person do that? You've all had that in a museum, you know? And you're like, wow, I, I just, wow, there's so much amazing texture. Maybe you're looking at a Gerhard Richter in, in person and you're like, wow, I mean, the, the way that he's got all these colors that merge together and then you find out his process is, um, you know, something that he developed. So again, moving paint around, this already is giving me a pretty good sense of what this color palette can do. And again, even though I, I have done a swatch before and I typically will do that because you know paint you know here's the thing paint is expensive <laughs> and it's not that you know you can use any color in the world that's the beauty of color but only it's going to work best if you have knowledge um and and so you know that, that's why it's kind of like a caveat there like go ahead and use any color you want but the best result will be if you know how to 
how to make any color work. And that comes down to color mixing, color harmony, and all those other things that, you know, are important. So now I've mixed my blue with white. So I'm going to go a little higher key <clears throat> just for variety. And I'm, I'm working super fast here, guys. And, and this is a painting that will be like a first layer. Um, I'm working pretty much wet into wet. So there's no time for this paint to set up. But I just want to show, you know, some things that I would normally do and how I would test these colors out. Maybe I'll mix a little bit here, take my finger and see how that blends with um, the transparent earth yellow. It's not as transparent, but having opacity here and transparency there is lovely, right? So that's something to notice. Um, here I'm just drawing a line with my finger. And again, this, uh, this lighter blue, and I can add more white to it here and mix that. Your hand is actually a wonderful mark making tool. And I'm gonna be using my hands on that large canvas. So the other thing I'm doing today in the second half of today is uh, working on a very brand new canvas. Not the canvas I showed on YouTube because I really did ruin that one. <laughs> I made some phone calls and found out that it's gonna be Willa's now. And so she'll be very happy. <laughs> she will be happy, won't she? Yeah, I'm gonna lay it on the floor and let her sister's only like, she's not even one yet. And I'm just gonna let them crawl around on it and oh. and the dogs. <laughs> oh yeah, that'll be fun. Maybe the dogs there will... are a couple questions. Do you want me to read them to you or you wanna wait? Sure. That's fine, They sure, go for it. Um, so Maxine asked, did you mix the cold wax with linseed oil or other thinner and or other thinners? No, just cold wax with the oils. Um, the cold wax though was mixed with Galkid gel. And uh, I showed that in, in last Monday. So if you wanna see what I did to get, to, to uh, start these cold wax and oil paintings, you can check out that YouTube video. It's, it's up there. It'll say under the live tab, you can see, you know, I'm gonna call these episodes probably. So episode one was last Monday, April 24th. This, this is episode two. I call it episode two because I'm continuing on with what I did on the first episode so that you can, I'll try to try to do that whenever I can. So guys, this, I just want to show you that this gives me an idea, right, of this palette. Um, and the cool thing is you can come back in here and you can, you know, make additional marks, which is great. And then convert these into black and white, check your value pattern, all those things that we do in, in powerful design, personal color to make sure that it's like everything you want and you have full control over shape and color and texture and line and but the values are way more important than color now that i've tested out this palette and here and it is what, what substrate is that again pam ah this is arches oil paper one of my favorites it is flexible but what i do to frame these when they're done is i either mount them i frame behind glass or you can mount them these are about five by seven windows you can mount onto cradle panel and you're done, right? Okay, so I'm gonna move into um, this other, uh, hang on, here it is, this guy. I started this uh, last Monday, so again, this is kind of like, what do I do next? And I, I, this is all dry, it's all set up, okay? I use, you know, drippy paint, it's cold wax and oil, a lot, of, a lot of people like that drippy uh, stuff. Great, right? So that's what I have now. Um, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take my brayer, and uh, it, it has a bit of this. Um, again, I'm not thinking because, I, you know, a lot of people get really stuck after they play. Like, they're, I'm really good at playing, but I don't know what to do next. Well, the first layer of play, which is what this is, is kind of like um, the first course of a meal. You're not done yet. You know, you're still hungry. And maybe you had a course, maybe you just ate your peas and carrots and that was not your uh, part, your, you know, part of your meal, but everything that you eat, everything that you do on your painting is good. Okay, so that's the first thing. There's nothing that you can do that's not good. And I'm just, I'm just, you know, again, using my brayer because it, it's not normally even a tool I use that much, but I'm just trying to get some color down fast. Uh, so look at it as like if you get a layer that you don't like, don't worry, that was just your peas and carrots. Keep going. Keep going. And what you're trying to do is get to your dessert. 
the dessert is when you finish your painting and everybody wants to, you know, you should be like, no, I'm going to finish this and make a commitment to yourself that you will finish your painting. And now that does require some, uh, it's either going to be two, one of two things for you uh, when it comes to finishing your painting. It's either going to be luck, which is called hit or miss. You might, you might nail it and then not understand why you just nailed it and never be able to do it again. Like, gosh, how did I do that? Right. So number one, um, there's that's one scenario. The other is that you have enough um, understanding of design and color so that no matter what happens, it's going to work because you know how to get yourself out of the out of the ditch. When you get in the ditch, and let's face it, in art we often get in the ditch. That's that's the one thing, and about the only thing we know for sure about art is just like life. So if you want to compare painting to life. Um, in life, we definitely get in the ditch many, many times, but we keep living, right? We keep going. We keep trying. We don't give up. We don't just throw things away in life. We keep them, and then we try to make them work. So art is just like that. Don't ever give up on your paintings. There's no reason to ever gesso over everything and start over. Whatever you put down, that's the beginning of history. Isn't that the truth, Pam? Yeah. Sorry, I'm talking a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You yeah. know me, I just break in. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm so happy you do because it, it breaks the, uh, I think I feel like I'm talking to myself because nobody's really here. <laughs> so feel free to interrupt them. And is this the same yeah. type of paper? Yeah, this is paper and it's uh, taped onto just a, this, what's it called? Uh, Mighty board, I think it's called. It's just a plastic that I can wipe off. Mm -hmm. and I can move it around during a demo. See, like I can just lift this up. And if I had 10 things going on, I could just lift it up and move it away. All right. And, so yeah, um, this is the Arches oil, right? Arches oil paper. Yes. And then, and then again, I, one of my favorite things here is, is monoprint and notice how it just gives me the ability to take these two shapes and move them anywhere else. They're identical, but what I'm changing is the position. So now they're down here. And there's still paint on here and, and repetition with variation is a, is a huge thing in design. Um, that's gonna really help you get your harmony. And now you can see that these, the, this was full blown already, the, the original dots, and then these were less um, like that. And then now these are even like really different. I can also take this and just put it down here, put my hand down like this and drag it. So I just say like really explore your materials. And uh, then I do love my silicone tools. Yes, this is a silicone tool. Sorry, I should have told you that, but um, here it is. And uh, this is listed on my resource page because uh, I do prefer this. Uh, I will use a brush with drippy paint, you know, because that's uh, gonna be easier. But um, in this case, I these silicone shapers or brushes or whatever they call them, because they're under a lot of names. Um, look at how lovely <laughs> and for those, and again, I know that everybody on here is not a cold wax and oil artist. And for me, it's not about the medium. What, what art is about for me is like, I, I want to be myself no matter what medium I work in. Right. Lisa, is that how you feel? Absolutely. Yeah. So some people get a little hung up on, oh, I'm, I'm a this or I'm that, and, and therefore I can't do this or I can't do that. Well, not really. I mean, and also when it comes to design, um, once once you understand design, you can work in any medium and it will be you. There could be slight differences due to technical, you know, differences. Um, that's why we're, we're attracted to certain mediums because we like the way they look, we like the way that, you know, you build layers, um, we, we like the techniques that they involve. But once you, figure out which mediums you really love, then then uh, your language and, and how you express yourself is very much related to your understanding of the visual language of art, because this is a language. So if you're trying to express yourself and be consistent, you need to know what you're doing and why you're doing it, because that's you know the shapes you love, the textures you love, the colors you love. Those are the things that are going to bring you consistency and help develop your personal voice. So now I'm, I'm, I'm scraping back and revealing. So I've turned what's a very opaque mixture of paint into um, a semi-transparent layer. 
and I'll just try to show you this a little better. Um, gosh, cadmium red deep and, and titanium white are about as opaque as you can get, but you can see that if you um, peel it back a little bit with your silicone tool, you can reveal. So let's, let's take that further. If I take a paper towel and just, I don't even need any Gansol. Now I did let this dry from last week, right? So it's dry. I can actually do some lifting here. If I use um, some Gamsol, so it took that much off. So let me try some, a little bit of Gamsol. I don't normally use Gamsol during my painting process, but if you're trying to lift as you go, just a little on a paper towel and I'm experimenting here. So um, if there is something that I really liked, and maybe I wanna peel a bit of that back. I mean, I'm just using this paper towel. But what's happening is um, I am revealing some stuff underneath. And, and again, the, the, what I'm looking for is for me, for my personal like aesthetic is changes in edge quality. Like that's really important to me. So Ooh. you kind of see that. Yeah. How's the sound? Is the sound better everybody? Mm -hmm. uh, is the sound better for everybody? Do you think Lisa? Uh, well, nobody has said anything anymore about it. Um, somebody said the red color gives the painting life. Yeah. And uh, let's see, Jennifer asked about what meaning was used in the play stage, meaning the black marks. She didn't get to see last week's video. Um, everybody's saying sound is great. And somebody asked about using fruit as color. And I think they mean instead of paint. Have you like, ever done that? Fruit? You mean like, uh, well, like vegetables, like beet color and, and stuff like that? I think that's what they mean. Yeah, well, um, you some of those things are fugitive um, colors that come from vegetables and you know botanicals and things like that. I think are going to be a little bit uh, fugitive, meaning not permanent uh, in color. So, I just think that you know be be prepared. Those are those are a little bit more experimental. The reason we buy pigments is because they've been tested to not be fugitive. That's why art materials are expensive. If yeah. you could just make pigments from the garden, you know, um, the botanicals and things like that, then, you know, everybody would be doing it. But there's a reason why professional artists maybe don't use that as much because perhaps it's not gonna be as light, fast and permanent. Now what I'm doing is I just took a bit of um, cold wax mixed with Galka gel and you can work back into an area and uh, make it more transparent because that's how you get transparency with any color, whether it's opaque or transparent, just uh, add a little bit more of your cold wax medium. And in in my case, I have gel kit. So I'm using my finger a lot because I'm just trying to, to get this to move around and you know, like minimize the amount of white paper because I can always get white back and that's what the white paper is. And sometimes I'll let the white paper show. I have nothing against white paper, that's fine. Especially arches because I love arches uh, white paper. <laughs> Yeah. Now I come in like this at any point guys. And you know, I, I am just a mark maker. So I will typically do this um, almost at any stage when I like this, you know, I, I really liked what was happening here, but I kind of lost some of that. So I can draw back into that. And so this to me, this you guys is play and, Oh, I didn't even get to my uh, lovely um, indigo yet. Not indigo. Oh, I think. Yeah. I confuse indigo with uh, Payne's gray. Like my head just almost can't uh, make the the distinction because Payne's gray, if you dilute it, it turns into what looks like indigo. I guess maybe that's why. Now here I've got this palette knife, and uh, you know I could kind of do what I was doing. Um, another thing you can do is like like this. If I now this is a juicy dot here. I love dots, right? So again, I know this about myself. It's taken a long time to figure out all the things that I love, but, um, and, and I'm certainly like always learning every day a little bit more of what I either don't, don't love or love. So if you just take a brayer and I notice how I'm, I'm not really holding on to this um, brayer, it's resting on a couple fingers here. You don't need a lot of pressure, but um, this is how you can get some uh, repetition here. And you can then go into this and go the other way. Uh, again, just moving paint around uh, and varying the way that I move paint around, and that adds interest. It does. You know, we always think we have to charge the brayer and get paint all over it, but you don't. 
<laughs> that is for sure. Um, yeah, so again, I'm I'm using my brayer, but I'm notice I'm I'm trying to disguise the edge because I don't want people to say, oh, she used a brayer. Um, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want. Um, in my case, I'm trying to be maybe I just don't want people to always know exactly what tools I use, what technique I use, because then it's like it becomes kind of gimmicky for me personally. Uh, and so I can again use my finger and maybe I want to bring back some lights here. I am playing, but because I've been painting for a while, I, uh, I am very much um, noticing values uh, pretty early on, um, usually. I'm not going to say that that's a always thing, but you can notice in this upper um, quadrant, like if I take, this is not a good example really, but because if I just like uh, block off this one quadrant here, um, you see that's mostly like it's mostly mid-tone and then there's a little bit of high key and then it goes dark in a little little area mm -hmm. um, So there's no nothing wrong with you kind of gauging where you're at when it comes to value You don't have to do that But I mean if you're ever wondering why something is looking like it's got hope uh, It's probably due to the value and less due to the color uh, So any questions I can answer some questions well um Jeanette asked about the paper, the brown paper that you use for mono printing, and Renee said it was painter's masking paper. It is. Mm -hmm. yep. And then Jennifer said you can also use deli paper, and she was asking uh, the medium, the underlayer medium, was it ink or the black oh, stuff? Right. I forgot yeah. about that. Thanks, Lisa. So last Monday, what I did was I worked with cold wax, medium, and oil, but I had only black paint on. And what I did was I made some drippy paint, which was here. Uh, I used some uh, of the Marabou crayon, which is, everybody loved that because it's the one that's like lipstick. And here it is. Um, you can, in, in fact, I can use it again. So <clears throat> this is a Marabou crayon. Uh, it's, uh, it's juicy. Like if I put it here and I rub it with my finger, um, you can see how it blends. So I use that. So I use a lot of dry mark making materials. I used a lot of things that are in this container right here, just my pencils. I used an eraser and then I got out my drippy paint, which was black plus um, it's still here. And look, it's still usable. So this is what I <laughs> used on Monday. The, and I labeled it. So this is oil, um, ivory, black oil paint, plus one to three Galkid to Gamzol mixture. And here is my one to three Galkid. I, now notice I, I, I stored this upside down. Whoops. I stored this upside down for a reason, okay? And I didn't even talk to you about why I do that. Um, with Galkid products and... Uh, you can kind of see that these are Gelkid products, um, but this one is is fine, right? It's you can see the liquid. This one uh, was not stored upside down, and now look, it's ruined because um, you can see here uh, in that little area here that this has become a gel. And I only saved this as a like to show you that you it's best to store these guys upside down, right? They're tightly sealed, and if you don't do that, you're going to end up with oxidation and if you don't use this little guy up fast then you just lost it so that's why i do store these guys upside down because i think less air gets in there and i have less chance that it's going to be ruined okay so that's what i did last monday and that's what i'm working on top of right now um now when this painting's done though guys I, i'm working on arches oil paper but i do not like glass mats and frames um, that's one reason I moved into cold wax and oil, and that's one reason why I love cradled panels. So when I, I'm going to finish this, and then when I finish it, I'm going to mount this on top of a, whatever this is, 16 by 16 panel, uh, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. So, all right, so now I'm, I'm kind of, um, yeah, this is the one painting. This is not the one broken into four. This is actually one painting, and I wanted to show you some other things that I might do with this. So... It's looking amazing, Pam. <laughs> Thank you. I want to show you some things that could be worked into this. And it doesn't mean I'm going to do it now, but I thought, well, since I'm doing this little demo, uh, I know some of you like collage. Um, so while I was watching TV last night and 
I got out my watercolors and I got out some uh, rice paper because oh, rice, paper, rice paper is thin enough that, you know, if I wanted to work this into a cold wax oil painting, it, I believe it's thin enough and I have used this before. And all I want to say about it is that uh, you, you don't necessarily have to um, put PVA size on, you know, both sides of the paper. Like I, I've heard that from Gamblin, but the other thing is that as long as you've but, you know, good pigment, there's good pigment in watercolors, good pigment in uh, pencils and, you know, let's say the ink that's used in book pages, for example, and you let's say you collage a bit of that in there, even if the paper breaks down from the acid in the oil paints, your the pigment, the ink will stay behind. So it, you know, and some collage and coal wax and oil is a little bit experimental. I mean, you know, we're not going to be here 200 years from now and see exactly what it looks like, but I'm confident that what Gamblin says is true. And that is that we'll stay behind, even if the paper gets a little bit, uh, you know, breaks down a bit. Now here is just some, I think these are ink blots on, you know, just some rice paper. So that would work because it's very thin. So the key is thin paper. You want thin paper. And then um, this is another great thing. I, I do encaustic monotype and, you know, have these scraps of paper. These are actually the ghost images. Um, again, thin rice paper. And I could uh, just tear it. And, and it's tough stuff. I could tear it like this. And I chose this because the palette is, is very much like the palette I have here. I mean, that's one thing I, I was looking for, but um, I could take this. So let me just get out a few pieces, a few scraps of what I could use. Those ghost images are always the best. Aren't they? Yes. Yeah, I see. Love. This is tracing paper with acrylic. And, you know, yes, I mean, you cannot necessarily combine acrylic with cold wax and oil, but this is a collage piece. So what holds this in place is just the cold wax. Uh, if you've added uh, Gelka gel, then it's a little bit, it's gonna be a little stronger, so a little bit better at holding things like that. But I have collaged in things with a, just a tiny bit of acrylic. And then I can grab this little piece here. And maybe I'll grab some of this rice paper. And Dita is asking, can you use copy paper? Sorry, Gita was asking if you could use copy paper. Yeah, um, that, yeah, I mean, yes, because you can make, you know, like laser copies and, and use that and that's getting a little thicker. Uh, and, and the difference, like there's a real difference, it's funny. Um, printer paper, you hold it in your hand, it has a different feel than rice paper. Rice paper just feels like it's gonna, like cold wax and oil would grab it, right? Now, you know, I have done printer paper. So yes, I'd say that yes, you can do it um, for sure. So now I'm gonna do, um, again, because I, I look at this as a, it's one painting now. And I what I wanna do is if I decide I wanna go high key, which simply means I want to um, make the majority of this painting a lighter value, I'm gonna add a little bit of, uh, don't want the red, hang on a sec. So I'm gonna, take a palette knife and I'm gonna warm, warm up my white a little bit by mixing in a little bit of that transparent earth orange with my white, but I don't want it to go too warm. Uh, so let me just... That transparent earth orange looks really nice with Thank the you. red and Thanks. blue and black. Yeah, and when you rubbed a little bit of wax into the red spot down, close to the bottom and it looks like there was a little bit of the transparent cold orange um, oh. what the one in between the two black uh marks yeah yeah that red right there it looks like there was a little bit is was there a little bit of the transparent orange in that it it yeah. just took on a different color it really looks nice yeah good call lisa you're right that definitely you're right about that uh another thing that i like to do is um you know take again a piece of paper and, and yeah you can use wax paper deli paper brown paper newsprint is great for making masks masks so i love circles right and 
Nine times out of 10, they're gonna find their way into my paintings. Oh, did we lose me or Pam? Can you guys still hear Pam? Hmm. Frozen. We lost Pam. Okay, let's see. Hopefully her internet's going to come back in just a second. You can hear me though, right? Okay, I'm going to call her because she does not know that she is gone. Let's see here if I can get her back real quick. You are frozen. And yeah, okay, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, yeah, Pam is leaving and coming back. So you, you have me for a minute. And so I don't know if you can see me. Okay, here I am. <laughs> I'm supposed to be painting at the same time Pam is, but I love watching her paint and I forgot I was supposed to. So uh, I just, I learned so much from her and I'm sure just like you guys do. So yeah, she should be coming on here in just a minute. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm here. Hope you guys are enjoying it. I appreciate all your questions and the help for those of you that know the different ratios. I'm so glad uh, for your answers, Jennifer and, and Renee, and uh, you guys know some of those things. And because I do not work in cold wax, medium and oil. Uh, I just can't bring myself to do it yet. But boy, I love seeing it and learning from Pam. So she should be back soon. Thanks, Marit. Oh, Jeanette, yes. Yes, I started following Pam uh, in 2020 when COVID hit and uh, learning from her. And um, I've just been going crazy since. Well, I started as watercolorist and I did, you know, photorealism. And then I needed to go back into or get a little crazy. And I started doing abstract. And that's when I found Pam. And so now I, I don't do as much watercolor just occasionally when uh, the mood strikes. Here comes Pam. Yay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Here's Pam. Okay. Let's see here. There you are. Yeah. Oh, no. Are you there? You're fuzzy. Hmm. Say something. Nope. Can't hear you. Nope. Can't hear you. Uh, check your microphone. Is it on? Yeah. Hmm. There we go. There's the two of us. Okay, let me add my other camera if I can. I hope I can. Okay, yeah, let's see. It's being sluggish, guys. Um, yeah. That's probably, I don't want to mirror my camera, so here we go. Yeah, you're clear okay. now. Let's you see if the other one works. Yeah, I've got yellow bars for this guy, but there you go. There, it's getting clear. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, te technology is a bummer um sometimes but okay good okay let me get out of here you hear me uh yeah you keep good talking. Lisa? i okay. think so okay good yeah i had to restart my computer guys and it's partly because there's a lot of like uh um strain on my um my system here because of the live stream but as long as you guys are okay with it then <laughs> thanks for sticking around <laughs> my gloves back on and thank you and lisa I for <laughs> running the yeah. ship while i go away yeah so are we ready to go back down to your palette we are i will go there putting my dirty gloves back on yeah okay. So now um, I'm going to look for like, where do I want to place my circle? I'm not really thinking, but this got a little murky down here. So I'm going to start down here. I've uh, charged my brayer with this high key. It's a, a warm white. It's not, it's not titanium white. I know you can't see that, but um, what I'm doing here is I'm using my brayer 
I could have used a Messermeister, but in any case, um, now I've got a shape that I had full control over. I had control over the size, the shape, the edges, because I tore it, I could have uh, I could have cut it out, uh, but now I've got this. Uh, this is also valuable, right? Uh, there's paint on it, so it's valuable. Oh just, yes. <laughs> oh. Put it around like this. Just press it down, and you know it's going to be a bit of a ghost image. It's not going to be, uh, but right away, uh, if I show you this uh, more up close. So yeah, that's I, super fun, Pam. <laughs> Get these collage pieces off. <laughs> Renee says, oh, I want to try rice paper. <laughs> yeah, it's sticking to me, guys. Um, <laughs> now you can kind of see that a little bit. Whoops. That area. Oh, and then move it to your left a little bit. Yeah. Thanks. There you go. That's you great. Ghost image. Now, I would just say, wow, that I, I certainly have a circle there now. But I would say to myself, that's a pretty obvious circle. <laughs> Do I want it to stay that obvious? Um, probably not. So then I would take a mark making tool and because I'm a mark maker, I would um, make integrate it into, you know, its surroundings because it's, if it's surrounded by chaos and it's going to feel a little bit uh, like a, you know, like a, a stranger at a party, cause it's just come, come into this painting and it's like, wow. I mean, everybody around me is just chaotic and here I am perfect. And you know, it's just not going to feel right. So now I've got this piece of uh, collage paper and I'm just going to like work it into this Grab my cold wax medium. That is the glue for collage paper. The only glue you have. You can't use any other glue. There is no glue. And Pam, uh, while we were having technical difficulties, some of the viewers were talking about the different kinds of papers to use for collaging. And Marie mentioned that she thought it made sense that the uh, papers needed to be able to or the, the cold wax medium needs to be able to fully penetrate the paper to make it work. So like vellum might not work, yes, um, correct. but rice paper and um, the different yeah. ones. I can't, I'd have to look back here on the chat. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll soon find out which ones work and which don't, um, which are, they do have to be somewhat absorbent. That's why rice paper works well. But you see here now what happened is that although the rice paper itself was white, when I put the cold wax medium, because it penetrated the paper, the paper uh, disappeared. And now I'm left with just the marks, which is fine. But, you know, it's fine if that's what you kind of are prepared see and in, in, in I'll show you where it is it's right oh, yeah. there yeah so the ink blot stayed but I lost my white and I wanted the white so now what I could do in here you know is take my finger and come back into that and just kind of integrate that a little bit um I don't want it to look like I'm I'm working around a shape too much, so I, I'm I'm more more likely to go over the shape like the dot and then lift later. So notice how I'm lifting the value around in this lower right hand corner, because if I'm working this painting toward high key, you got to start somewhere and then you you start to um, make these decisions of, you know, what do I love? What do I want to feature? Uh, what what's important to me in this painting? What's working? You know what I want to get rid of because I don't like it. It's just not helping the painting, or it's maybe I love it, but it's in the wrong place. Um, and so now you can see how I just turned that lower right hand corner into a much more high key area. I'm not saying yes. that that's you know perfect or anything like that. And I'll tell you why I don't like it right now is because it's got four symmetrical dots, and I do not like symmetry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm throwing it off right now. Right now, there's no symmetry. Now what I've done is changed it so now there's yes this, right now i can live with that okay <laughs> <laughs> even though i'm i'm playing you know i when even when you play i, I think as adults the difference between being uh playing as an adult versus a child is that you may react to something that just like a little bit doesn't feel right and 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 you in the in the uh uh spirit of play you can do what I just did because that was a very playful move. You know, I didn't really know what was going to happen. And I also like to very thick and thin. So I'm the one reason for using my hand is because I know I can like put a blob of paint down and all that kind of stuff. So 
All right, so any other questions? Because uh, we're coming up on the top of the hour and I'm gonna transition into um, acrylic and uh, um, acrylic <laughs> on a large canvas, which, um, yeah. So is there anybody with a question? Well, Elaine uh, wondered if you could remind her why you add Galkid to cold wax medium. Yeah, there are four main reasons. And I just so you know, I covered those four reasons twice in the in last week's video. So definitely if you want to see, I talked a lot about why I add Galka gel to cold wax medium. Many artists don't. Uh, I do because of a conversation I had with um, Gamblin Colors. They convinced me that, you know, there is a reason. And the four reasons are strength. It adds strength to your cold wax medium painting. Flexibility. It adds flexibility to your cold wax medium painting. Um, it will give you a slight sheen instead of a total mat. Uh, now, if you like total mat, uh, the sheen is almost not, you can't see it very well. Um, and to me, like one of the, the biggest benefits is that it will dry faster. So those would be the four reasons. And uh, yeah, so any other questions related to cold wax and oil? Um, let's see. I Lisa, really I think that we had answered them, but... Yeah. Um, there is a question about what does high key mean? Okay. Um, high key uh, refers to value. So we have uh, basically, uh, I, I aim for three values in a painting. I, I, they're going to get many values in between from light to dark. So value refers to how light is it? How mid-tone is it? How dark is it? Um, the, the highest contrast would be black and white. You have no mid-tone. But in a painting, typically, we have lots of values. And if you convert this painting into black and white, you would see um, values. So the values are the black and white version of a painting. And ideally, what, you know, what I teach and what, I, what I've observed from the masters and observed in contemporary work and, and just everywhere, uh, and this is kind of uh, something that I try to do in my own work because it, I tend to be able to a lot better when I uh, pay attention to my value. So high key means very, very light. And it's amazing how much effort it takes to truly have a very, very light paint. Uh, you know, white obviously is white, but if you take something like Payne's gray or cadmium red or cadmium orange, any mid-tone color, which is like a mid-tone gray when you convert to black and white, takes a lot of effort to get that to be a true high key. And we're talking values 9 and 10 on the value scale from 1 to 10. Okay, so anybody else there? Um, so I will uh, either finish this by next Monday and record the whole thing and probably pop it onto YouTube, or I will just wait and let this set up and, you know, hopefully finish it. I should probably be able to finish it like next Monday. If I don't, you know, even if I don't, if I don't work on it between now and then I, I can hold and work on trying to finish it. Okay. So, um, well, that, I probably will finish it because paints are all out and, and that in the week, <laughs> I don't yeah. like to store paint. So if I can finish it today, I will, and I'll record it. And then I will post that on uh, YouTube probably, okay? Um, Great. So Lisa, what I need to do is I, I need to like, uh, it'll be really disruptive if I move my cameras around. Uh, so I'm going to like make myself disappear for a second. Okay. Hang on a sec. So Lisa, you used to work? <laughs> uh, no, I forgot. <laughs> That's what I was telling them when you, uh, you know, restarted, got off and everything that I was supposed to be painting as well. And I totally forgot because, you know, I just That's love so watching you and I learned so much from you. And yeah, I just totally. Oh, thank you. Well, that's so sweet of you, Lisa. Thank you for uh, being my co-pilot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to. Give me about five minutes and hopefully this will go well. I got to turn everything around. So hang on. I'll be back. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay, guys. Well, I am here again. So uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we will see if we can get them answered um, from Pam. We don't, she's not wanting to do bunches of noise and everything and make you nauseous from the cameras moving. So um, that's okay. I've, uh, I do have a couple things on the wall 
that I'm going to try to paint on. Um, I just really enjoy listening to her. So she's uh, going to move her camera to the wall so that you can see, like if you watched last week, she has a big canvas uh, taped to the wall so that she um, can work large. And let's see, uh, Becky, all of her liquids upside down. Well, it's just the that particular liquid that will turn to a gel if the air gets to it. So that's why she turned it upside down. And um, of course, since I don't do cold wax and oil, I do not remember the name of it. Uh, can um, Marie, do you know what that is? Oh, here she is. Let's see here. Yeah, just there you are. Hey, Pam, what was the name of the liquid that you turned upside down? I can't remember the name of it. Uh, yes, hang on. It's called Galkid Gel. Galkid Gel. Yes, because yeah. it will turn into a gel. It won't stay liquid. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened to that one. Oops. Yeah. You, you see and the then. Salt, and here's the liquidy one, which I store upside down. Yeah. And the one that was black, it had some of the, that liquid in it, correct? And that's why you stored yeah. it upside down as well. Yeah. Good it's correct. just the nature of the beast with that stuff, right? That's right. That's right. Good call on that. And uh, now let me get my second camera turned around. Okay. And uh, Maxine was asking if you ever work with an easel, but you pretty much just do stuff on your wall, right? You know, um, I have an easel, but... Uh, you know, I, I prefer working on, uh, yeah, I, I just have to say you're probably right. I don't use my easel um, too much. I'd say if I were to oh, maybe go outside, then I would. I would set oh, my yeah. garden. That would be fun, right? Okay, let me see if I can get this thing to oh. work. And you were using um, dark red, is that what it was? And the transparent? Yep. Transparent and orange. And I was using, okay, transparent earth orange, uh, sorry, transparent earth yellow and Payne's gray. Yes. Now, there you go, Pam. now, we can't hear you very well, Pam. At least I can't. You kind of yeah. sound like you're far away. Right. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a microphone. <laughs> My microphone has to work with me, has to move with me. Yeah, yeah this is always a challenge, guys, between uh, now. Hopefully, I can put this sort of. Can you hear me okay now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, I know that this is crooked, so hang on. I got to figure out. Oops, not that way. And hang on. So both of your cameras are the same view. Um, true. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. That is a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun, don't we? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you for saving the obvious. Oh, my gosh. That's so weird. <laughs> well, it took me a minute. <laughs> okay. Well, is this view going to be helpful here? Well. Um, it might be because if you're in front of it, we won't be able to see, you know, what you're painting, but this is kind of sorted to the side. So, um, you might move your camera to the left a bit, I think, turn it to the left a bit. So you're, um, seeing more of the, that's the right for us. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying oh. to, <laughs> I'm winding my camera guys. Sorry. I know it's probably making people dizzy, but. <laughs> yes, Maxine says she's starting to think that the wall is more effective. And I agree, Maxine. I paint acrylic on the wall as well. And I really like it. You just have to, you know, depending on your space, um, I have plastic on my wall going down onto my floor. And because we rent and my studio is in my home, Pam has her amazing studio. You, you still might till you do you see how it needs to be a little bit more to i don't yeah. know yeah no thank you let me yeah. do not sure exactly 
I mean, I kind of want one to focus on my table of mixing. Oh, okay. well, there you go. That's perfect then. Yeah, I'll that'll be that. great. Okay, then we get two views, right? All right, so I uh, so I woke up, I, I actually had a different idea for today. And uh, what happened was, number one, this is not the canvas that I showed in another video where I said, I, I think I just lost a $300 canvas. That canvas I truly did lose. And uh, so here that is. And this is what I labeled it with. I took it off the wall. It's like a six feet by, I don't know, eight and a half feet or something like that. And I labeled it and it says, um, <laughs> Willa and Reese, those are our two <laughs> granddaughters. They get this canvas because I ruined it. Um, and sometimes you learn the hard way and, and, you know, I should have made some, like I should have, but when I bought this, I had no idea what Willa Prime me it meant. And it was uh, on a huge sale. So anyways, that's that. Okay. I wonder if I can figure out how to get myself out of here. Oh, you just, the blue little thing here. Let's see if that works. Did that work? Oh, sorry, Lisa. No, that, that wasn't right. Sorry. I did not do that. That right. took me out completely. So <laughs> let's see here. Give me just a second. <laughs> sorry. That's okay. I'll figure it out. <laughs> That's a little insulting. <laughs> no, it's, I, you know, <laughs> I don't know why, you know, it, I might have to. No, um, no, no, don't, don't do that. Because we're going to want to show both you, both of yours, right? Yeah. Oh, you know what it is, Lisa? I think it's this little, uh, no, the diagonal. That That is black. Ooh. Let me see. Let's see here. Hello. <laughs> we'll figure it out, guys. We will. Everybody knows that we are real people. Okay. So I'm going to put that you works. in there. Oh. And so let me. So if I maximize both of yours, will that? No. Am I going the right I, direction? I thought we had it's it figured right out, but I just cannot remember. Yeah, I think so. Um, well, actually, no. Uh, you need to move your camera, turn it toward the right, or move it. Whatever you're doing is better. Um, it's still a little behind the chat. There, there, there you go. Yep. Hang on. A little bit. A little bit more. Huh. I know that's too much, but um, now I bring it yeah, back. Yeah, that is a little too much. Let's see here. So, hmm. All right. It's good, Lisa. We're good. Um, don't worry. You know what? The thing is, um, here's the thing. I, Lisa, you did it right. I think what we'll do is we'll focus on the main canvas first. And when I'm mixing, you can show the mixing. Okay. Okay. Sounds perfect. Okay, guys. So what I did, I woke up this morning. Um, first of all, I was just thinking last night, I was thinking like, I'll just do white because white shows up on gray. So this is a new canvas that I prepared over the weekend, and uh, it's a system I'm trying out with wooden slats that go over the top and bottom and then the tacks, and it's supposed to be an easier way for me to get canvases down and up on the wall and keep multiple canvases going at a time. I'll let you know if it works. Well, anyways, I woke up thinking, gosh, I've had these fluorescent colors, and I have so many more, and I just have never like even tried them, right? as far as I got was moving them into a squeeze bottle, but that was as far as I got. So then I just did a quick swatch this morning and I thought, wow, hmm, those colors are actually pretty nice when they're mixed. Like I don't like them like this exactly in their pure color form, but being an artist who loves like complex colors and sophisticated grays, I was really intrigued by fluorescence and I'm gonna start with them. Lisa was telling me today that they, they are considered a bit fugitive, meaning that they're not as light fast. So you would definitely want to treat a final painting with them um, with some UV protectant layers. Is that right, Lisa? Yes. I just saw a post today on Instagram, uh, somebody that I follow, and I believe she might be in our pro group. Um, she did a bunch of research and talked to Golden. 
okay. and you know how good they are with uh, yes. all that. And they said they are also, they have developed a new UVLs that doesn't have all the toxicity that the old, uh, you know, spray did and all that. And it's a water-based one, I believe. But anyway, if you apply their UVLs, um, like for, I couldn't think of the word. Varnish. Yeah, the, uh, it increases the light fastness of the, um, oh gosh, Pam, my brain. For for essence, yes, for sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and then anything else that is not light fast, it increases it. So it wow. is, yeah, okay. it's, it's really great stuff. They, you know, of course they do all kinds of tests for cool. their things and she had been talking about well what she was talking about was printing things on a printer you know the stuff that you can do and use then the right kind of ink and that that helps to make that more light fast as well that's nice. why she started doing all the research and contacted them so oh, wow. this is great stuff so you'll it have to is. be sure and use it yeah yeah thank you guys all right, so now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you what I've done here. And, you know, given what Lisa just said, um, if you can show my, I guess, my palette now. Yeah. Uh, Lisa. I forgot I have a camera on that. Um, let's see, which part are you going to be going on? Hang on, I'll go here. Can you see? Uh, no, you're behind the chat. You need to go the other direction. I'll go here. Is yes. that better? That's perfect. Well, okay. A little okay. higher or closer to you and to your right. Yes, perfect. Okay. <laughs> you can see my colors. I just got, you know, the blue, the red, the yellow. I've got white, black, and gray. And I've got uh, for brushes, I've got uh, these guys, which I've made. Um, for the most part, they're pretty homely looking, but um, but they work. And so I thought I would just start out with my usual mark making real fast and not spend too much time on that part because, uh, you know, my, my purpose for mark making uh, on a large scale piece like this really is for, for me to get a feel for like space and how much space do I have to fill. So I will grab just a few mark making things here. And you know, the other thing is that it's not gonna show all that well. So let me just grab, um, I've got a white brush here. I mean, I've got a brush. This is a nice long one. Uh, I don't know, if, I think during COVID they don't make these uh, or something happened and, but I got these on Dick Blick and they're listed on my resource page if, if you can get it, but again, I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna start with uh, something that you can see because, you know, and so I'm just gonna have fun with Mark. But this is automatic. Uh, drawing slash painting and can you hear me okay Lisa? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna go grab a coffee break while you're doing that real quick. Okay. Pam. Great. Okay, I'm gonna switch brushes to a thicker one. Here's my other handmade. Uh, just, just attach any tool to a dowel rod and you've got yourself a opportunity to really loosen up during automatic painting or drawing. It's really fun. Hold it toward the end for less control. So if you tend to be the type of artist who feels like, you know, you, you want to loosen up, but you, you, you're always like in control, um, try this. Extend your tools. It's really fun. And it works. So, not thinking. I'm basically doing, you know, a bit of like asymmetric writing with this extended tool. Um, Eusemic writing is simply uh, almost as if you're writing something, but it doesn't really make any sense. It's the idea behind letters and symbols and without being literal. And I do love to work that way. Now I have taped this canvas off. There's three inches here, three inches down there, three up there and three on the side. And I know where not to go. <laughs> something I didn't mark off last time and it's okay. 
how we learn. Um, okay, so just just getting my a feel for like how much real estate have I got. Um, it's great to just kind of loosen up with those arm movements and you know like that. And uh, I could do the same thing with black. And uh, let me just. Normally, I would be letting the white dry, but you know, again, it's, it's an early stage here, so it doesn't really matter whether I let things dry or not. Let me get some paper towels. Um, all right, so maybe I'm thinking, do I want black paint or do I want, um, I might have, hmm. I'm going to try a marker. This is a, a Uni Pasca marker and it's acrylic. Yeah. What's that? I like Pascas. Yeah. Please to talk about Pascas. How do you use them? Well, I paint my shoes. <laughs> Yes, do you have them? Can you show them? Um, I can get them just a sec. That'd be awesome. Okay, let me get this thing charged. All right, guys, so this, I'm just going to use a marker, and it is, um, it's an acrylic, and this one's not refillable. Um, the other one that I had was refillable, so I'm just going to try it out and see how that works. Yep. Works pretty well. Hopefully you can see that. We charge it by um, pressing it against the canvas or whatever. And yeah, we can see it. All right. And of course, I use Poscas like you do as well on paintings. But I kind of really got into them because I started painting my shoes. Oh, <laughs> I've been using those for a long time. Uh, no, I I was not. I actually had used the Montana brand a few years ago, quite a bit, because I was doing some very fine detail work on some acrylic paintings. So I used itty bitty points for that, you know, the itty bitty ones. Yeah. And uh, then I got out of detail and and didn't use them. So. Uh, wow. Then somebody told me about Pasca, and I kind of went crazy with those. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, you know, it's nice because they're all in one place. Like, I mean, it's a marker, right? And, and you yeah. know, you can see those marks. I didn't want to make too many. I, uh, I'm going to move into uh, the fluorescent paint now. And uh, the idea mm -hmm. I had was really to just um, kind of work with my hands and the tools. Uh, let me get some water here. Do you want me to show my shoes real quick while you're doing that? Ah, yeah, please. <laughs> okay, so here is one of my shoes. And, you know, because the Poscas have all different size points, I can do all different kinds of details. This is my baby girl on the front, Coco. And I've actually painted these twice, you know, gone over with different colors because I, I don't seal them. Uh, but with uh, the Juicy Black Marker is Pasca. And that's what I painted my shoes with. And um, I don't seal them, so they do eventually wear. But they do really well. And these shoes were originally white and old and so yucky. But I didn't want to get new shoes because I hate breaking in shoes. I love my comfortable shoes. So I decided I would spray paint them black and then... I painted them with the Poscas. You know, it was an experiment, right? And then Belinda, which is one of our pro admins, said, get some gold laces, Lisa. <laughs> so anyway, that is what I did. Yes. Nice. Thank you, Janan. They were fun. Have you been wearing those, Lisa? Oh, every day. <laughs> oh, do you get lots of comments? Oh, yes. You would not believe people even stop me and say, oh, I love your shoes. Did you do those? You know, or where'd you get them and all that? So, yeah. 
Well, I'm not surprised about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I think I'm going to go into the fluorescence now, and uh, I, I don't really know what to expect, but that's part of the fun of it. And I'm just going to hold my tray um, like this in front of me. And while I could use brushes, I'm, I'm more <clears throat> interested in um, mixing colors on the canvas. I don't, you know, I, I don't like these colors as they are coming out of the uh, bottle. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. They are too vibrant for me. So my idea is to make them into sophisticated colors by mixing them. And that doesn't mean that I don't want some pure color somewhere. Like, um, you know, what I want to do is just kind of uh, play a little bit with these colors and I know they'll really show up against the gray. So hopefully you can see that and uh, I could. Ooh. Can, can you see that okay or? The color you just put on the, yeah, it's perfect. Don't move it, no, no. I'm moving it closer. Oh, okay, closer is good, but move it, move your camera to the left a bit. There you go, yeah, okay, perfect. Is that better? Yes, that's great. Okay, good, all right. <laughs> Okay, guys, so my fingers on um, this paint had to be shaken because it's been sitting in that uh, container for so long. Um, but I, again, I, I'm, I'm just, again, it's just, you know, not thinking. I'm, I mean, I'm thinking like Willa, our three, three year old granddaughter. I've been watching her, and it's just such a joy to watch her just have fun. Yes. And uh, that's all I want to do right now is just have fun. Um, okay. And somehow against the gray, it's not as, um, you know, repulsive to me, <laughs> but uh, and even that white is already set up uh, amazingly fast on a canvas that's so thirsty. It's got gesso on it. And I did make the, the gesso gray. I just put a few drops of uh, black paint and the white gesso, that's all it took to turn it gray. And I just did that because that somehow I, I love that gray brown. Okay, so that's that color. And then I'm gonna just move into say some blue. So I'm mixing kind of on the canvas here. Somebody was asking if we could uh, take the chat off of the screen, but I, yeah. I sure. didn't know if you wanted it recorded on the screen or not. Well, yeah, it is kind of nice, but um, I know it's it's also kind of disruptive. But, you know, I think you're getting most of the canvas, right? Um, I see it all, so. Um, yeah, I would leave it there. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. That's right. We all want to pay, paint like Pam's granddaughter as a child. <laughs> And with our fingers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nothing better than that. <laughs> so um, at this point, I'm just moving. Notice I'm moving this color around. Wow, this is really fun <laughs> working with my hands. Okay, wow. I even grabbed a canvas so I could do something while I was sitting here, a small one, but yeah. well, there it is. I couldn't find what I did with it. <laughs> so neat. All right, now we have our yellow and uh, I'm gonna start to, uh, this is very high fluorescent. I mean, it's, it's very potent, right? So I'm gonna start adding some gray to that right off the bat. Um, just dip it into the gray here and knock it back a little bit. And then add some white to it. And right off the bat, you see that's easier to look at.
And Pam, somebody asked about selling your work. Where do they find your work? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got three galleries. Um, let's see. So the Art Spirit Gallery is in Coeur d'Alene. That website is theartspiritgallery.com. And that's in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And then there's one in Missoula, which is the radius. It's just radiusgallery.com. The third one is a new one. And I have a show there coming up in July. That's quadrigallery.com. And it's C-A-W-D-R-E-Y.com. And so they, they currently carry a lot of my older work because they're trying to attract a contemporary audience. And I said, hey, I've got a lot of older work. Take that. And I'm working on some new work for them in July. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, I will try to get those put in the chat. Oh, thanks, Lisa. Oh, I can just see the comments I'm going to get now on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just make me laugh. That's okay. Because they're not me. <laughs> oh, well, um, I just did the uh, Radius Gallery and the Art Spirit Gallery, and I guess it came up as you. And then the Caudry, is that nancycaudry.com or? Uh, that's, I think that's her personal gallery. So it's Caudry. I think it's just Caudry Gallery. Okay. I think. And this time obliterating. So again, this whole with certain obliterate is another exercise that we do in the expressive drawing book. I am definitely obliterating some of my marks. Um, some more than others, some there's some transparency that you can still see, but uh, I mean, this is just a lot of fun. You guys should try this. Here I can obliterate a black line. If I sand it, it would come back after that's all dry. to stand back when you work on a large canvas like this for sure. Um, I'm using this uh, intense uh, red, fluorescent red. You know, I mean, eventually that's probably the role it will play is to really move the eye. So um, you can tell how it just has a quality to it that <laughs> it vibrates with the gray is the whole point. Now I'm going to add, here's a beautiful, uh, high key color, meaning very, very light value that I've mixed on my uh, tray here, a little bit of black. Um, if you add black to something mixed with white, it, 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 it like if it, if you mix color with white and it looks too sweet, like it looks like cotton candy or something, you add just a tiny bit of black that knocks it back. So it looks now not like candy, but it's just like a more sophisticated color. And uh, I'm going to put some here. It's like this dirty pink. Okay, when you're at your table with your palette, we can see that gray tray where the brush is laying. Right. Gotcha. So in case you want us to see what you're doing, yeah. um, that is a good place to be. So. Can you see this? Yes, we can. I just couldn't see what you were doing a second ago. So. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. I forget. I have two cameras. So. I've just been dipping, you can see my glove, and uh, what I was saying was that if you mix like white to this color, it, it's kind of pinky and it, it looks like cotton candy, but you add a little bit of black to it and now you get this more sophisticated gray. And I just added that here and I like that. You know, so it, yeah. part of the reason we mix colors is to ask ourselves, do I like that better? 
um, for not. And again, the, the thing between opacity and transparency is just so important. Uh, okay. Now I'm going to mix a, a, a darker gray. So I'm mixing it on my palette here. Let me go to my palette, my camera that shows the palette. Um, so here is my, can you see that, Lisa? Yep. Okay. So I'm just making a darker gray. I want it to be darker than the, the, the color of the canvas. So this is a dark gray. There's no color. It's an achromatic gray. And I'm just going to go in here and uh, draw with my fingers, adding to some of the marks I had with the acrylic, which now I'm feeling I, I would rather see fewer of them. So I'm knocking them out. And then what remains might be just the right amount, right? So you put yeah. them on, and then, you know, what's left? I don't want to get rid of them all, but the, the cool thing is that if I do get rid of too many, I can always put them back. And somebody asked if you were going to sand, so you could do that as well, huh? Yeah, and I never know. That It's always like a possibility, but I don't try to, like, I don't know. Like, it just depends on, you know, I could finish this today. If I end up liking it, um, even though it, it's, these are colors that are a little different from my normal palette, but... If I end up liking this and the, the spontaneity of it, I might just take it off the wall and let it live for a while. Like I'm in no hurry to, uh, you know, um, take it past a point where I'm really enjoying it. Even if it's done in a day, um, I just need time to let it, to live with it. And then if I decide that, hey, you know, there's a level of spontaneity that I think is worth keeping, then I might just do that. Yeah, it's so important to live with it. Let it talk to you, right? Yeah, Lisa, you, you've really encouraged our members to step away from your canvas. <laughs> yeah. Let it live for a while. I hear your voice, and it's yes. so important. That's right. That's because it has made a difference in my work. Yeah. Now I'm playing these two grays off. I'm creating a pattern between dark gray and light gray kind of close to the center, but again, all these things can be changed. I'm just trying to set up a little interest there. Close to center, but not quite. And kind of liking how um, now if I can match the gray that's, that's the canvas color and just annihilate part of that writing I'm definitely, if you guys don't know Cy Fombly, um, I'm definitely a fan of his. So <laughs> whenever I start feeling like, wow, this looks really childish, I'll just bring up some Cy Fombly and I won't feel so bad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am definitely channeling Willa. I could, uh, I probably have to show her this and, and tell her to come visit me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing too you know on my youtube channel people say oh my god my three-year-old could do this i'll say yeah willa did it <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell her you said that that's right no i i really guys um the more that you believe in your own voice the less it will matter what anybody ever says about your work it won't even matter at all and i used to be really sensitive um I, I tell the story where I used to, you know, stay up till three in the morning, and that's when my husband wakes up after he's gone to sleep at eight, in the, eight, in the, eight at night. And uh, he'd often come in and either say he really likes something or really doesn't like something. I'd be in my studio, and uh, and and he would know that no matter what he said, it would change by the morning. So if he loved it. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Lisa? How about Roy? Does he come in and? 
Yeah, he'll come in and say, oh, honey, that looks so nice. And of course, depending on what I'm doing, I may have just, you know, made a total mess or whatever. And, right. and you know, he's just being nice usually. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, he's he helps you so much. And my husband helps me um, with things that I like if I can't lift something or, you know, he's helping me with this uh like he helped me put these slats up because it was a system that we were trying trying to figure out. And well, and what since you mentioned that, somebody asked how you have that up, and this looks different than it did last week, doesn't it? You yeah. Some... Right. So last week, I I just used tacks, uh, those big jumbo tacks, but this time, and the reason why I wanted a, like a little bit easier system. Um, I've got two pieces of wood, which I got at the hardware store, and they're roughly, I'll say, one inch by one inch, so kind of like a, a long stick, eight feet long, and what I do is I wrap the canvas, um, this, this canvas goes up and over, and I tack these before I hung it, then when I hung it, it's got three screws, one, two, and three so now if i undo the three screws i can lift the whole thing off and just undo there's another screw here here and there and then the, the tacks but if i just undo the tacks and a few screws i can lift the whole canvas off lay it on the floor you know have and then i could undo the void but i think i'd leave it with this canvas so i can like switch between canvases and not feel like i can only work on one one canvas at a time yeah so, that is a great idea pam well, it's just been bugging me because it's like I have this one place where I can really hang a large canvas and I don't want to be staring at just one canvas at a time. I kind of want to be working on multiple things. So, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, the more you think of it, um, you come up with a solution. And All right. Well, this has definitely been fun. And uh, I want to thank you guys all for joining me. How are we doing on time, Lisa? Uh, it's only 1030, so you do have more time unless you want to answer questions and stuff. Sure, um, I'm happy to do that. Um, yeah. we thought I, I'm so sorry that you didn't get a chance to paint it really badly. Um, well, I just, I just smeared some paint on, so it's kind of like what you're looking at right now. So can we that's see good. It? Oh, can yeah, we see it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Let's spotlight Lisa, what you're doing. Okay, let me... Find me. Let's here, see. I can, let me help you here. here. Yay. Oh, yeah. Look at those colors. You know, what me is that? Love What's the, the name colors. of your lighter blue? It is Light Ultramarine Blue by Golden. It's one of my favorites. Oh, I didn't know they had a light ultramarine blue. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, that really is. It is just gorgeous. Yeah. So I just, because uh, I didn't like what I had, right? So, oh, wow. you know, you just go a different direction, right? And I just smeared some on, and, and I also used the Juicy Marabou Crayon Ooh. and a little bit of Posca before I did the blue. And then I spritzed a couple places with water to get some fun drips. The Marabou dripped and the paint dripped a little mm. bit. So I, I think I might have to do some more drips. <laughs> I do too. And yeah. you had such a beautiful underpainting as well. I mean, that was yeah. your colors. Yeah. Yeah. Those are my favorites, you know, the pink and the blue and the t I don't have the teal on this one though, which is usually on everything, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what I did. Well, um, Lisa is in several galleries, you guys. Um, and she, uh, has been winning awards right and left and selling work. And, you know, I've been working, she's been like in my groups for a while now, and it's such a pleasure to see all the things that she does. Do you want to mention some of the studios that you're, or studios, galleries that you're in, Lisa? Uh, well, I just got some miniatures accepted into a miniature show at Park Lane Gallery. And I also dropped off some, uh, I wanted you there with me, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah, I don't even That's know how okay. To I dropped off some paintings also at Park Lane Gallery to be a two month display artist. So mm -hmm. I really like uh, being a guest display artist there because it's a co op, and you know, co ops, you have to pay 
uh, the fee and you have to work. But to be a display artist, you don't have to do all that. You just bring things and, um, you know, have them for uh, two months and then they just take a percentage. Out. I don't know why we can't get all of us up here. It's just kind of so strange. Weird. Here we are. Yeah, <laughs> I figured it out. So yeah, we'll learn this stuff eventually, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I entered, I just, I entered like three shows this weekend. It was a very busy weekend with figuring things out. And wow. so I won't hear about a couple of those for a while but um that that'll be really good and and um yeah i, I can't think of anything else right well now. yeah you're lisa's such a hard worker and like uh, just in the last couple of days she was working really hard toward this miniature show and i was like how many pieces do you need to have or can you have and she's like eight and <laughs> so yeah she you know you work so hard lisa and you've you've earned these awards you've worked really really hard and uh just congratulations to you. We're really Thanks. proud of you. Thanks. Yay. I appreciate everything I've learned from you. Oh, well, we appreciate everything we learned from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Questions, anybody? Um, Tamina from India. Hello, Tamina. And great idea for working on a series too. Jeanette. Janan. Hi, Janan. Uh, let's see here. Now's my chance to see you guys. Um, I wish I saw your show from the beginning. Kim, don't worry. Uh, it's all recorded. You can watch it uh, in the middle of the night. You can be eating popcorn and watch it on TV. <laughs> yeah, get some skinny pop. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Um, okay, let's see what else we've got. Yes, Maxine Oliver is like saying, let your food digest. Becky Haran, let's, uh, that's important to wait when you've gotten to a certain point. Yes, for sure, you guys, you all know that. Um, how do you mount on the wall? Um, yeah, so sanding for me, guys, is a, a question of, um, well, sanding, what it does is it reveals. So it's, it's a way to, uh, like there's a concealing part, which I've done here. I've concealed a lot of things, right? Like I used to have this black line, well, now it's concealed, concealed concealed, um, concealed, concealed. And when you sand, uh, it brings back history. So there are numerous reasons for sanding, but one is to reveal some history that is down below. It adds complexity, uh, but then you gotta be a little careful because right after you sand, if you sand the whole thing, it's gonna look like really bad and you have to be prepared for that. So, um, there are many kinds of sanders. There's the electric orbital sander versus the hand sander. And I use both, but uh, when I'm working on panel more often, I'll use the orbital sander. And if I got lots of layers of paint, I'll hit it with the orbital sander. But for some light sanding, I'll just use a hand sander and be more specific, you know? And uh, you get a different surface texture. Like I mentioned, what will happen is, and this is true with any glaze. So sanding is like glazing uh, what glazing does for a painting is it harmonizes so it, it creates this umbrella uh, and under the umbrella of a glaze which is really see-through and transparent it impacts all the colors underneath it so if you've got an overall glaze you've just harmonized your painting um, in the same way if you sand you've now treated the whole surface or whichever surface you've hit with the sander so that now with the thing that's harmonizing it is kind of that uh, similar type of texture and feel of the surface texture, the surface uh, quality. Uh, and so you don't have to sand a whole painting, but if you sand in one area, it's probably good to sand in a few others so that that doesn't become like, oh, th why does that look different? But it doesn't appear anywhere else. So repetition with variety is um, the key to helping your paintings look great. Uh, and feel great because if you have all these little isolated things like one color there and one shape there and one texture there, uh, it's kind of like a buffet. Um, and there's nothing wrong with a buffet, but if you're trying to serve a full meal on the plate um, and not tell people to choose what they want from your buffet, which is your painting, then you need to be the creator who determines what dishes you put together what's the what's the main dish what are the side dishes and then what's the dessert right so you have all that control and it's just a matter of what you're trying to say 
you know, that's great, Pam, to mention about the sanding in multiple places. I don't know that I would have thought of that per se. You know, I just maybe would have done the one spot if that's what I needed. But you're right. That is another way of getting the variation with repetition. Except that I will say, um, if you sand in a way that it's almost like you don't really yeah. notice it yeah. um, even up close. Then, you know, I, I'm, I'm talking about, I guess, maybe more of the orbital sander, which is mm. more heavy handed and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's great though, okay. yeah. Great guys. So how many of you have been painting today or have you just been watching and listening? Okay. Either way, it's great. We're happy yeah. to Forgot to ask that. And also, Pam, do you want me to put any of your other links in the chat? Um, well, if you guys are interested in getting some free stuff from my school, I have uh, free videos and tutorials, uh, and I have a lot of other freebies that, um, you know, I offer to anyone who wants to stop by. And it's a, it's a teaching and training website. It's my art school, and that's uh, artandsuccess.com. So many of you that are here are in my school already. Uh, I know many of you, I recognize your names. That's uh, what I love about this is the sense of community. That's why I have a YouTube channel. That's why I go live because I want to reach out to all of you guys. But ultimately, if you want the best content, the best uh, tutorials and demos and, you know, watching paint, I mean, that that's definitely behind my uh, membership group, Art and Success Pro, as well as um, my courses, which are largely focused on color and design. I, I'm, I'm not a big technique person. I think techniques are fun and they're exciting, but they don't really help you to know what to do with it when you come home from the workshop. So if you guys like to go to lots of workshops and their techniques, um, that's all great. We've all done it. I've certainly done it. But um, I think in my last two decades, I've realized that, you know, all the techniques in the world just don't help you to uh, understand uh, how to um, exploit the techniques you love and pull your paintings together and finish them. So if finishing your work is important to you, um, that's where the, the higher education comes from. I mean, you don't have to do that, uh, but many artists want to do that because they want paintings that make them feel really good, that they're happy to share, that they're proud of. And, you know, we've seen a lot of members in our group sell their work. And yes. uh, I, don't, I don't like to say that, I don't want to teach anyone to paint to sell because I, I did that and I know what sells, but that was not satisfying to me. No, um, you're right, Pam. It's, it's, it is great because I have learned that from you um, to paint for me. And I've also learned the things you've taught about being able to complete my paintings. Okay. Uh, you know, I had the techniques and everything, but you taught me, you know, how to get to the end. So your course has definitely taught me both of those things. Thank you so much, Lisa. Yeah, uh, I know that we have all had like paintings just pile up underneath our bed or we said, you know, <laughs> it's not working. I'm just going to gesso over it. But um, I'm so much uh, a believer that every painting is like a child. And uh, even yeah. if you don't, you've never had children, you know, your painting is your child. Yeah. And how you treat it, you know, if you treat it with empathy and love and nurture it, even when it looks ugly, even when it's got acne and warts and... <laughs> broken bones and it's, it's just <laughs> a, a maybe a horrible thing to you. Um, you know, you can put it in a timeout. You can do that. I've done that many times, you know, I've painted yeah. I've been outside, outside for like, you know, five years. And then I brought them back and it's like, finally, they're cooperating with me. <laughs> do what I want. <laughs> so, Harachami just said that if you paint for you, the art will always sell. It's not a worry. And that I is so that. true. Yeah. I love that. And I love that because Arachmi, you know, she she's a really super duper experienced artist and she yeah. shows all around the world. And she's got some very definitive, distinctive ways that she loves to work. And she's not of the camp. Um, unfortunately, you know, there is a, a belief out there that, you know, your art must be one thing and it must be recognizable from a mile away. Like, who is that artist? Right. And that is one way to paint. But um, anybody who knows me or knows Arachmi or many other artists who are in our group, um, we kind of celebrate the fact that we're, uh, we're explorers. We're, we're into discovery and not locking ourselves into this neat and tidy little box where we can't go outside the box because, oh no, if I do that, what will people think? Who cares? Who cares yeah. what people think? What matters right. is what you think. 
Right, Lisa? That's right, yes. Yeah. And yeah. Pam, since you asked if anybody was painting, several people have been painting. Yay. So that's wonderful and collaging. And uh, we do have a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, one person said, how does she shine the cold wax and oil medium cold wax medium and oil painting after she's finished. I I'd just want to clarify, do you mean shine it or sign it? Because it could be well, two ways. I'm the curious. Word is shine. So Becky, oh. this Becky Haran. Yes. Um, and well, maybe I'll, I'll answer both questions. Okay, uh, if it's good. signing it <laughs> <laughs> on whether it's on paper, canvas, panel, but nine times out of ten, I will use a uh, my favorite pencil, which is the 8046. Uh, let me grab it here. Um, Stabilo 8046. It's right here. Um, I always tell everybody about this and I buy them by the dozen and they're listed on my resource page because this is the one pencil that is so versatile. Uh, it's really dark for one thing and it is water soluble. But when you work in oil and cold wax, it doesn't really smear because you're not hitting it with water. You're hitting it with wax and it doesn't smear. Um, so this will be my, my key way, I'd say, to sign cold wax and oil paintings. Now, how do you shine it, buff it? Uh, once it's absolutely dry, which depends on how thick your paint is, but you want to make sure it's really dry. Um, I'd say a soft cotton rag. You don't want it to be at all wet because um, and it will pick up the lint from your cloth. And so if you don't want that, just make sure it's completely, completely dry and then just buff it with a nice cotton cloth is what I would recommend. I like um, to use the blue shop towel kind uh, that they are yeah. lint, lint free. Yes. I've not had trouble with those, but boy, oh, I have. I have picked a lot of lint off of my cold waxed watercolor paintings oh. that I've Oh my. You, you I can just see you with a pair of tweezers like. Yeah. <laughs> a little straight pin. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. That, yeah. You learn, I mean, right? I, yeah, I guess I've seen that happen as well. Um, I saw Jeanette's question. All of my courses are, um, they're, they're kind of geared for the independent study artist who doesn't want to be on this structured, like you've got eight weeks and then I take the course away or you've got 13 weeks and then, you know, sorry, you've got access for a year um, because I'm of the belief that we need to, um, and also the courses are meant to be repeated again and again by you. And each time you go through it, um, if in powerful design, personal color, you paint 16 paintings in this year and next year you go through it again, I guarantee your paintings will be different. They'll be better. So the whole idea is to um, uh, think about how you learned how to ride a bike. Think about how you learned how to hold a fork or how to walk. Um, repetition. And you learn from somebody else who kind of guided you, right? And so I guide you through step by step in my courses. You watch over my shoulder. I often get stuck. I have to solve a problem. Um, I always get stuck. But not really for very long. And I guess that's the key. Do you want to be stuck for a long, long time or do you want to get unstuck quickly? So the key to um, getting unstuck quickly, finishing your work, being proud of it, feeling like it's really totally you, no compromises is education. And I was taught that you did not need education if you had talent by my parents because they didn't want me to pursue art school. I now realize that talent does not matter at all. Like, I don't think I have much talent at all. What I have done is I have shown up in my gallery, in my studio, and uh, I, I try to make this a better and better habit. That's one reason I'm doing these lives on Monday, for example. I'm reading Atomic Habits. How many of you have read Atomic Habits? I'm trying to make myself a better person uh, than I was yesterday. Uh, of course, I, I fall back a lot. <laughs> but <laughs> I, okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's just fun to be in this community um, of artists. And uh, in, in all of my courses, we have um, a lot of Facebook group that's private. And these communities are like the heart and soul of my life. That's where I spend my time. And, and then reaching out to my YouTube channel, I mean, that's a wonderful community as well. It's um, far reaching. And uh, so I want to thank you all for being here. And uh, if you've ever had any of my courses, I thank you. I hope you're enjoying them and um, anything you want to pop into chat about what you've learned would be great. 
but yeah, so um, how are we doing on time? Um, yeah, any more questions? Tim Till, yeah, and we have several people from the groups on chat, so that's wonderful that they've joined us today. The community, we learn so much from each other, and we have our uh, Zoom and Paint that we do once a month, and we learn so much from each other there and all the different things yeah. that we do. And um, so, yeah, there's several people here from the pro group. And I'm, I'm not sure if uh, the difference between, it's hard for me to tell the difference between your PDPC and the pro group because I see everybody in both. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if, if anyone's confused about that, even for those of you who are in my courses, um, I created PDPC first, Powerful Design Personal Color. That's the acronym is PDPC, which nobody can remember. So <laughs> not the best, probably not the best title for a course, but I created that before COVID hit, um, created that in 2018 uh, because I felt that I'd been in so many workshops for like 20 years. And I found that literally not almost nobody was teaching anything about color and design. It was always like a technique or, you know, watch me paint and then you painted like the instructor for a while and then you come home and then you kind of just morph into yourself again because after all, that's what you're gonna do. You're yeah. never gonna paint like anybody else for long. You, you might try it out, but it's not gonna feel right for long. And then you're gonna be like, nah, you know, something's not right, something doesn't fit. You're trying to fit your foot into the wrong size shoe. You can do it for a while. There's it's not going to feel good, you know? And uh, so I created that one first. So I, I still think that is the best place to start in my school. If you're a serious artist, because I have to tell you that, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you to do things that are, are, are kind of like um, calisthenics. I mean, the things that are going to make you a better artist are things that you must do to make things become second nature to you, like driving a car. If you want your paintings to feel like driving a car where you don't have to think about it anymore or think less about the hard stuff, then you do need uh, some tools. So it's all about filling your tool chest with color and design. And then from that, um, in 2021, over 700 members uh, in the Arts and Success Pro Group worked together to create uh, to me, my best creation uh, for the rest of my life. And I don't yeah. think I'll ever create a course that um, includes more of my training over 30 years. It includes what I learned from my MFA, um, but it goes well beyond that. And, and in fact, it, my, that it, uh, it's called Art Success Masters and it's gone so far beyond what I learned from just my MFA that when I had to create it, I ended up learning so much from it. And I thought, okay, that's proof that there's a lot there, even for a person like me who has 30 years of experience and got an MFA, I still needed my course. Um, and I, to me, that just amazed me. Like I didn't expect that, but I've been doing the stuff in my course myself because I realized that I wasn't doing it before. I devised these exercises because I knew I'd never done them and I knew I should have. So anyways, that's uh, officially launching in the fall. Um, but if any of you are interested, um, it's called Art Success Masters, and uh, it's a it's a full blown, comprehensive college level course. Um, I, I I do think that anyone who's been through it feels like they really have gotten a master's degree. But in my opinion, it's better than a master's degree. You don't need a master's degree. What you need is the information that um, a master's degree will help you get, which is. Uh, the ability to define your content, who you are and what it is that makes you tick and, you know, what colors do you love? And, you know, there's a reason behind the things you choose. But um, in the end, uh, there are so many other things you never learn in school. You never learn in art school. You don't really learn much about color mixing. You don't learn much about harmony, how to get harmony. You don't learn much about balance and um, repetition with variety and rhythm and, you know, all these things. So somebody's got to teach you you got to learn it. I mean, if you want to be a great artist, if you want to be an artist that's really, really proud of your work and and and, and really bulletproof to other people's comments, uh, that I needed to do that myself. And so that's kind of what I share. So anybody else have any other questions? Um, oh, nice. Where's it? Mariah says, I've been working on the Painter's Color Diary book today for a seascape. That is a great tool, 9 by 12 great suggestion for a format. Hard, but worth it, yeah. Most things that are worth it are pretty hard, right? 
Yeah. Um, thank you, Jennifer. Um, the pro group is like no other online art experience, best program available online. Thank you so much, Jennifer, because I know a lot of you have been in so many things and Janana taste of the pro community will be enough to get one hooked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, that's awesome. Hi, Linda. Nice of you to join us. So listen, guys, if you want to be here next Monday um, with us, with Lisa and me, and hopefully Lisa will have more time to paint next <laughs> time and show you what she's doing, because what she's doing is so cool. Um, <laughs> check out um on my youtube channel i will like post an upcoming event and as long as you're subscribed to my channel and you hit the little notification bell you'll get a little ding like on monday when we go live um in case you like didn't mark your calendar but i hope you guys will start marking your calendars for monday at 10 a.m mountain standard time and in the event i put all the other time zones for all around the world okay so i want to thank you all so that's that's where you find the recordings as well under live. Yes, um, they are going to be under live, correct? Um, because they're different from the other videos which I upload. These are live and, and they live on the channel forever. You'll see the chat and you know some people will watch this later and say, "Oh, hi, I'm from." You know, they think it's live, so it really gives you that feel of the live experience. Okay. And, and, um, and one this. more question, um, Jeanette asks: Is the pro group suitable for beginners? Um, you know, the pro group really, I recommend that you um, start with my powerful design and personal color. In fact, no, I would say the pro group is a, a very highly, um, it's, it's open by application only, or if you take my powerful design and personal color course or the Art Success Masters, you can definitely be in pro, um, even as a beginner, but only if you're willing to do the work that it takes to become a qualified pro member, which I say clearly in the application for the pro membership that you must have prior knowledge in color and design, because I'm telling you, if you join pro and you don't have that, you're going to feel totally intimidated. Um, the artists in there are very high level. Many of them are selling their work, showing their work in galleries, having solo exhibitions, showing in museums. Um, and and that, that's great, you know, um, but that's in alignment with getting the information you need. So honestly, as much as I'd love to have you in pro, I don't want you to be um, intimidated. So I recommend you start at the beginning. If you don't have, if you're a beginner, the best thing you can do for yourself is spend a tiny amount of money and get the education you need and work your way up the ladder. And I have two courses that are, those two courses, I mean, there's, to me, nothing that, uh, you really need um, beyond that, uh, that's kind of going to give you the foundation you need. So sounds okay. great. All right, guys. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Lisa. Everybody give her a round of applause. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's always fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And thank you guys for being patient when I had to switch cameras and when my um, internet access pooped out. And uh, But these are our Momentum Mondays, guys. I know it's not Monday everywhere around the world, but um, for most people, it is because those who are um, on Tuesday are sleeping. So, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. Great. Thank you all. And we're going to close the call now. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Happy painting. Bye, everybody. Bye now.